I'll be like over here at the rental that I'm working on, doing a mud tape, sheetrock repair, texture job. So we've gone through, we've got all of our seams and screw holes mudded, sanded. Um, we've got all of our prep work up to cover everything. Last thing to cover is the door. Always the last thing you want to cover, in case you know, you need to leave for some reason. So, um, fun part about this is there's no lights, so it's all work lights. And what we're doing right now is we're getting ready for the texture. We are mixing up our uh, joint compound to put it into the hopper gun. So I've got my compressor, my hose, hopper. What I found very handy about this compressor is that it acts as a little holder for you to uh, fill up your hopper when you're doing this by yourself. It's a little bit of a struggle to get that filled up all the way with a heavy ass bucket of mud. You need to hold it and fill it. I prefer to do this as a two-man job. It tends to go faster. Um, tends to turn out a little bit better too, especially with someone that can run a light to check the angles on your texture to make sure you're actually getting an even coat. Something you'll notice if you go through and do a full room texture, you'll find spots that are a little lighter than others that you couldn't quite see with direct light. So something to make it easier to find those spots is point your lights at the wall at an angle and then check from the other side so you can kind of see the shadows that form around the texture to see if you're getting a nice even coat. What we are doing in here is a light coat of orange peel. So for other tools, we've got a respirator mask or you can use a dust mask. I'm going to highly suggest you use a mask. You don't have to, but the texture coming out of a hopper is going to aerosolize into the air in a very fine mist and you will breathe it and it's pretty gross and obnoxious to kind of clean out your nose and your throat and your mouth from the, the texture buildup you get if you do this for more than you know 30 minutes to an hour it gets pretty bad. We've got glasses, always wear glasses when doing this. Um, there's no predicting how the texture is going to come out of the end of the nozzle. It can you know, jump back a lot more than you'd think, especially since it's not even pointing at you. And then I've got my hopper gun nozzles. So we've got really heavy orange peel, medium orange peel, light orange peel. So I'm going to use the light orange peel one. This just goes onto my hopper gun on the end. Smack that in there. on there, nice and seated if I can, and before you start doing anything like filling this up, you want to check that your gun is clean, um, you always need to clean these after you're done, inside, outside, all around, texture buildup inside the gun will cause it to shoot dry chunks or clog it or make your trigger sticky, um, and you won't know until the next time you use it, so you want to make sure this thing is really clean. Uh, check that your clip or your um, pipe clamp is tight on the top so you don't have your hopper pop off and you start filling up with mud. You know, give your trigger a squeeze. Make sure you've got all the play that you're going to need, which should be all of it. It's got good feedback. So we're going to mix up the mud. I already mixed this up. I'm actually mixing a few different muds, some old mud, some new mud. Uh, which is not suggested to do. You really want to mix up a light or super light compound. This is um, all purpose. You can get the uh, green dot uh, texture ready stuff. That's usually pretty much ready to go for the texture gun. You may need to mix it a little bit with water to get it right to the consistency you want. I'm using all purpose because a lot of the extra stuff I use goes back into doing mud tape, all sorts of other stuff. And I'm pretty good at mixing up exactly what I need. I'm also using some scrap jugs of it. And the owner brought over like, hey, use this up. All right, saves money. So we got it all in the bucket. We got it all mixed up. What I do for general purpose of mixing mud. Um, as an example, here's a standard mixer. You can get the four blade ones. I prefer the two blade ones. They tend not to throw so much mud up and around. I highly suggest against the, uh, what are they, the fan blade ones. They look like they'd work really well, but they don't. They pretty much come apart after a few mixes. 
Uh, I've invested in a few of them and I'm just kind of done with it. These fixed blade um, wide spinners are probably the best way to go. So what you do is you add some water, mix it, and then you want to check your consistency. The easiest way to check it for me, I would say, is grabbing it and pulling it up and watching how it drops back down. Kind of just checking the flow of the mud. And when you start mixing, you'll see if you do that, nothing's basically going to come off. It's going to stick there. And that's because it's really dry. And you're going to want to keep slowly adding water until you get the consistency where it just barely wants to run off. See that coming off in just little driblets. And that's about the right consistency to get a good texture going. If you're going for a really light orange peel, you want it to be a bit runnier. If you're going for some really heavy orange peel, you're going to want it to be um, a lot thicker. You're going to want it to not even be coming off the mixer almost, but you got to have it to enough of a runny consistency to get it to come out of the gun. So if you have no flow, it will not come out of the gun. But once you hit that flow line, that's about where you want to be for a really heavy orange peel. Or if you're doing some spray out knockdown, I mean, there's a million ways to do texture. So, like I said, we're doing a light orange peel, so we're going for a medium to light mixture. Got it all mixed up. We're going to get our mask on, our glasses. We're going to get the gun set up. And then, the most important step is testing your texture before you shoot it. You're going to need a um, test piece of sheetrock or a test piece of plywood. I'm going to have to go grab some scrap sheetrock. But you're going to want to basically set it up, you know, generally where you're going to texture. So you're not spraying somewhere, you're not trying to get texture. And you're going to give it a little spray at about the distance you're going to want to spray it at. Now, distance is a good thing to keep in mind as well. The closer you are to the wall, the larger the droplets are going to be. The farther you are from the wall, the more drop down the droplets are going to get. Um, basically when the droplets come out, they're going to hit an arc and they're going to hit the wall and want to slide down a little bit. So there's going to be a point where you're shooting basically straight at the wall almost. And when you get really close, they're going to get um, smaller and more speckled, but they'll build up faster. So what you're going to want to do is test both the texture coming out of the gun uh, for distance and for consistency. This is where you're going to find out, is my consistency right? This is where you're going to find out, is the pressure coming out of the gun right? And on these hopper guns, they have an adjustable um, valve back here that will change the amount of air coming in and out. So this basically adjusts the drive of your center pin inside of the texture gun. And that will determine how much texture is allowed to get in front of the air path. So you're gonna, you can fine tune with that if your mud consistency looks good, but your texture is not coming out quite right. Fine tune with that and get to what you want and then, you know, figure out your good distance to spray at. And the distance you're going to spray at usually is going to come down to what's your space. I mean, some of these rooms I'm going to be doing are pretty space tight. I've got a really tight hallway to do. I've got a really small bathroom to do. Got some more room in the bedroom. Uh, the last note to keep in mind while you're doing this is for corner work. The best way I have found to shoot corners is if the camera lens is my gun, I want to come up and shoot up and down right to the edge of the corner. And by the edge of the corner, I mean I'm barely getting droplets on the corner, on the, sorry, the other wall. And then what I'm going to want to do is come over here and do the same thing, barely getting droplets on this left wall. So I'm going up and down. And then I'll look at how my corner turned out from doing that. And if I need it to be thicker, I want to come to the corner and be exactly straight onto the corner. So it's going to be 45 degrees from either wall. And you're going to want to do this lightly because if you try to spray too much directly at the corner, they're going to start getting shots that are going to go hit the wall and spread this way, hit the wall and spread this way. And you're going to get all these things that are basically pointing at the corner. And if you're not paying too close of attention, especially in a corner like this, you might not notice that you've got heavier texture here than you do over here than you do on the other side of the wall because it's such a small portion of the wall over here. It's really what another set of eyes is good for is to watch the texture as it goes out to make sure, hey, it's coming out consistently. Uh, it's not so consistent. You know, step back, put less texture down, go back and do a little heavier there. 
And then once you get everything textured, you're basically gonna do two or three walk arounds, check around on everything, um, do final spray touches. Like I said in my last video, we're not doing the ceiling today. That's a whole nother thing, texturing ceilings with mud guns. We're doing rollout on this because it's gonna be a lot easier and cover a lot more of the imperfections. So that pretty much wraps it up for getting started and um, base lessons on shooting texture out of a mud gun, mixing the mud, uh, things to keep in mind while doing that. Again, um, if you got any comments, questions, concerns of me doing things wrong, please do let me know. I am always happy to learn and always happy to teach. Uh, like I said before, I've been doing stuff like this for about 12 years. Uh, I've got a lot of tips and tricks to kind of make this go a little bit smoother, a little bit faster, hopefully a little bit cheaper. So subscribe below if you want more random videos about do-it-yourself, car repair, home remodeling, thinking about maybe putting some uh, of my work stuff on there for industrial contracting, but that follows under some NDAs. So we'll see.